we're going to create a very simple app today. So let's go to Xcode, open it up, and hit Create a New Xcode Project. This is going to be a single view application, and we're going to hit Next. Now, let's name it uh, Our Counter App. Organization name could be your name. Uh, your organization identifier. This is going to be important when you start publishing to the App Store. So it's usually a domain name in reverse. So it starts with com, dot, whatever your domain name is that you have, and then dot your project name. So right here, Swift already preloads our counter app right here. The language is going to be Swift. You can also pick Objective-C, but we're dealing with Swift today. Um, and we're going to have devices set to iPhone. Okay, and then click Next and save it wherever you want. I'm going to save mine on the desktop. And now you have a brand new Xcode project. Now, if this is your first time using Xcode, don't be daunted by all this. By the time we're done with all these tutorials, you'll be really familiar with it. So here are all of our folders over here on the navigation side. So let's go to main storyboard and start creating a user interface. All of our user interface elements will be found on the right hand side. This is the utility pane. So they have labels and buttons and segmented controls, um, everything you need really to build an app. So let's start out by pulling out a label and a button. Now this doesn't look so much like a, any Apple iPhone I've ever seen. So we're going to go and change the size of this. This is the view controller. And basically, a view controller is the link between your user interface elements and the underlying code that is written there. So I'm highlighting this, making it blue. I'm going over to the top, and I'm going to the fourth button from the left, and that is the attributes inspector. I'm going to go down to size, change it to an iPhone 4-inch screen, and I'm also going to change the orientation to portrait. Okay, now let's grab our elements and center them a little bit better here. And Xcode does a great job of giving you these blue guidelines to help you line up all your user face in for me, in, um, elements. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, now let's adjust some of the looks of these elements. So for the label, I'm gonna click on the label and I'm gonna go over again to the attributes inspector and here is where I can set the text for the label. And I'm going to say, um, let's start counting. This is going to be a counting app. So every time the button is clicked, there's going to be a counter that reflects the number of times the button has clicked. So we'll do that. I'm going to, first I'm going to drag the handles to make this a little bit larger so we can actually see what's on that label. Make this a little deeper. Okay, I'm going to set the text alignment to center and let's increase the font size a little bit. There we go. Um, and I know that we're going to need a little bit more than one line because the amount of text we're going to be printing out is really covers over a couple lines. Look, we're going to give ourselves three lines. That's good. Now let's click on the button and change that title to, instead of being button, we're going to go over again the attributes inspector for the button and we're going to say add one and let's increase this just a little bit so give it a little bit more room and line it up there we go there's our blue alignment so now that we're done building our user interface and i know this is really kind of boring but as we get into more detailed apps and down the road we're going to start creating a lot of different elements to make this a little bit more snazzier so let's close out our utility pane by going up to the upper right hand corner and you'll see it says hide or show utilities in the tooltip. So we're going to close that and we're going to open up our assistant editor which is up here in the middle. It's got, it looks like a little tuxedo. So we're going to click on that and that takes us to viewcontroller.swift which is really the file that we need to start writing our code. So let's begin. The first thing we're going to do is we need to let this code know about the elements we placed on the view controller. We need to tell, let them know about the label and this button. 
So to do that, we're going to click on the label. We're going to control, click, and drag. You'll see that blue line. See that? I'll do that again. Press control, click on the label. Oops. Click and drag. And let's put it down right below this class view controller line. Okay, so here's a pop-up menu that's going to help us build this IB outlet. So we're going to name the label. Let's call it out. Put label and it's of type UI label and it's it's storage is strong you don't really need to get into that right now as I said as we get more involved we'll discuss that but for now just know that it is an outlet and uh, Xcode automatically has that declared we are calling it output label and it's of type UI label so hit connect let's give a little bit more space here and it creates an out IB outlet and IB stands for interface builder so it's an interface builder outlet and we're just going to initialize it by saying UI label open close parentheses and now we need to do the same thing with the button we need to let our view controller dot swift file know about this button that exists on our view controller so control click and drag this time I'm going to drag it down to the bottom because this is going to be an IB action so let's do that put it right there and Xcode comes up with this handy pop-up menu and we're going to change the connection to an action. Basically what we're saying is we want something to happen. We want some sort of action to happen when this button is clicked. We don't want it to just um, be an outlet for some information. So let's call it, oh, add one button. And it's of type UI button. Now the event uh, is preloaded as touch up inside and that's basically what happens when a user taps a button or clicks on a button so we're going to hit connect leave everything the way it is and we're just going to give ourselves a little bit of space between this now you see what happened here xcode automatically created a function for us because we know it was an ib action an interface builder action we named it add one button and the sender is of course the ui button here's where we're going to write all of our code that will allow us to change the text in the label and also to count the number of times it has been clicked. So we created this variable called output label, but we also need one more variable. And that variable, we're going to call it var, and we're going to call it current count. And we're going to set that equal to zero. Now current count is going to hold the amount of times the button has been clicked and we're going to need to access this to help change the label. Now I could have also typed a colon and int to make it more specific as to what type of value I am writing. Um, but Swift is smart and it, it inferred that it's going to be an integer because I, de I declared it as a zero when I um, first wrote it. So. You don't need it, but it's always nice to have it in there. So I'm going to leave that in there. Now let's go down to our IB function, add, I'm sorry, our IB action function, add one button, and let's start writing some code. What do we want to do? We want to change the text of our label. So instead of saying, let's start counting, let's do this. We're going to ask the output label dot text. Okay, because that's a property of all UI labels. So ours is output label, we're accessing the text property, and we're going to set that to the, sorry, button has been clicked. We're going to use a placeholder, so backslash, open parentheses, current count, end parentheses, um, let's see, let's number of times. That sounds good. The button has been clicked a certain number of times. Okay, good. So, just for fun, let's access another property of output label. So, output label dot, and if you can see, you can see all the properties we can use with the UI label. We're going to change the text color. So, we're going to go down here. You see it's going to be preloaded. Oh, no, nope, didn't preload, but anyhow, it'll start. Text color. There we go. And that is a UI color dot, and we're going to say red color. And there we go. 
Now Xcode should have this auto filling out for you as you start to type. Now the text is going to change and the color of the text is going to change as well because currently it is black. Now here we have current count. We need to put this number in here so how do we do that? So we're going to access that variable again. I'm going to give ourselves a little bit more room. So current count is going to equal current count plus one. Every time the button is hit, the current count variable is going to be, it's going to have one added to it. So the first time this is zero, it's going to be zero plus one is one. Next time it's, this is going to be, this is going to be one. So one plus one, and this is going to be two. So this will keep track of how many clicks are, um, how many times the button has been clicked. All right, so everything looks good. We don't seem to have any sort of warnings which would show up here in the top or along here. Let's run this. We're going over to the simulator. We're going to switch this to iPhone 5 and click run. And let's see how this looks. Build succeeded. That's always a good sign. Here it comes. Okay, let's hit the button and see what happens. The button has been clicked one number of times. And let's go again. Two, three, all the way up. So this will keep going, however many times we click it. So that's pretty cool, right?